I just want to welcome everybody to the February 18th uh, regular City Council meeting. Uh, if you could please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Roll call. Mayor Racy? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Porter? Here. Councilman Miller? Present. Councilman Webster? Here. Councilman Dowd? Here. Councilwoman Skiff? Here. Councilman Wagner? Here. Quorum is present. First item on the agenda is to approve the agenda. Motion to approve. Support Dowd. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item number two is the City Council Minutes 2A, regular meeting of February 4th, 2020. Move to approve. Support. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item number three, um, site plan review, 3A, site plan number 2020-01, GICS Grove Facility 38030 Van Bourne Road. Wish your council. Move to approve. Support. Okay. Good, good evening, Ms. Gowen. Good evening, and thank you. Uh, this site plan uh, is represented tonight by the property owner, Mr. Juan Alzandro. He is here with us this evening. Uh, on February 11th, the Planning Commission met and unanimous, unanimously approved uh, the site plan as presented. Uh, I'd like to go over that with you. The site is 38030 Van Bourne. Uh, this is a medical marijuana grow facility that was approved two years ago. Um, we thank you for hanging on to the project. He ran into a similar issue with the cost of construction, uh, similar to that of what Mr. Uh, Judge did with Metro Storage. So he also had another business in the city that he was able to sell his interest in. So he had the funding to build a uh, 6,000 square foot uh, building here. It is in the IND2 IND heavy industrial zoning area. Uh, this is a picture looking down Van Bourne to the west. So uh, Hannon would be at the end of the road there. Uh, this is to the east and you can kind of see in the background there's a yellow truck pulling out. That's the entrance to the assembly plant. Uh, this is the site plan. I know it's kind of hard to see, obviously. Uh, there were 16 conditions imposed by the Planning Commission. Uh, one of my Planning Commissioners is here, Mr. Borgi. Thank you for being here this evening. Uh, the conditions are spelled out. The applicant has reviewed all of the conditions. Uh, the only thing that's a little bit different about this in regards to conditions is that we have required a security plan be submitted. That is part of the overall application process with the Medical Marijuana Facilities Licensing Act and we're gonna ask that he meets with the police chief to discuss the security plan in advance. Uh, and that is it on that. I can take any questions uh, if anybody has any. Otherwise, uh, again, the Planning Commission has recommended approval. Okay. Any questions from council? Through the chair, I would like to ask Ms. Going a couple questions regarding this subject, per se. Um, first of all, how many licenses do we have left remaining? We have none. Okay, and secondarily, uh, can we expect um, pretty soon here, uh, site plans for the Wayne Wellness site. Why would they submit site plans? I'm confused. There's uh, no the need for site alley. plans. The bowling alley. There's no additions being done. There will be no site plans. And whatsoever in the renovations? Uh, they submit building plans to the building department and that has been done. Okay, so no, that has to come forth to council at all. Uh, no, you approve their licenses. Okay. You don't approve an interior renovation of a building ever. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Anybody in the audience? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Congratulations. Item number four is appointments to boards, commissions, and committees. 4A, approve the appointment of John Mills of Chestnut Street to the Parks and Trails Committee. So moved. Support. Dowd. Any questions? All in favor? 
Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item 4A, excuse me, 4B, approve the reappointment of Ira Bunnick of Sim Street to the Dangerous Buildings Appeal Board for a three year term to expire February 2023. Move to approve. Support. Support. Any questions? Anybody? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Congratulations, Ira. Thank you. Item 4C, approve the resignation of Matt Morrow from the Wayne Downtown Development Authority. Move to approve. Support, doubt. Any questions? Could I have the, the um, clerk, could you read the letter? He's, he submitted a letter which uh, he actually talked to the DDA. It's a little bit different what he told us, but it was a nice letter that he, he put. I thought it would be appropriate for the public to hear. Sure. Dear City Council, City Administration, and residents of Wayne, I announced my resignation from my current position at the DDA on February 12, 2020, meeting with a heavy heart, as I will no longer be a member of this community by the end of this month. As I reflect, I see a lot of new positive growth taking place in a city where only a few short years ago, a member of the previous council claimed it's the end of the world. It goes to show that even in our darkest moments, we must press on to change negative narratives and encourage enterprise. I'm thankful for having had the opportunity to serve the people of a city that will always hold a special place in my heart. Despite what seems has been a challenge, I look back on the past few years and feel that my character and appetite to bring reforms and positive changes has only solidified. As I depart from this community, I feel that it it is heading in a more positive direction, especially with the DDA. At the last meeting, the Chamber of Commerce and Wayne Main Street were both in attendance, which, which signals a sea of change in scope and approach for this community. Finally, while it is no secret that there are sections within the city that seek division, we must continue to ignore those voices and fight for the right to see our community in the best light possible. This task is not one that should be undertaken only by local government, but of the people who call Wayne, Michigan home. There cannot be an us versus them mentality if the city wishes to succeed, but in its place, a mutual trust across the board. Remember the best way to change something in a positive manner is to join it. All the best, Matt Morrow. Okay, thank you for reading that. To the chair. And hold on one second. And also, we want, would like to see that we put a letter thanking him for his service. Sure. Yep, I already got it right here. Okay, <laughs> I figured you did, but I just wanted yep. to say it. Go ahead. You you said it for me. Thank you. So a letter of appreciation to the gentleman for his service. Certainly. Anybody else? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item number five: communications and reports. 5A is revenue and expenditure report for period ending January 2020. Receive and file. To the chair, may I ask up uh, yep. before we move on uh, that if we could find out because of a resolution that we did back in October of 2016 regarding uh, funding, we assessed a, uh, a fee, additional fee for funding that was uh, intended potentially for a consolidation at the time or to um, be able to build a fund to uh, do some updating with our current court. Uh, can we could find out how much we do have in that fund? Okay. Would be greatly appreciated. Anybody else? Item number six, general items. 6A, approve a letter of understanding between the City of Wayne and the Command Officers Association of Michigan, amending current contract language under Article 12, Section 22.51A of the current Comb Collective Bargaining Agreement. Move to approve. Support. Support. Doubt. Okay. Uh, City Manager, do you have anything you want to add to this? Uh, through the Chair, not unless you have any questions. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item 6B, 
approval of setting a study session to discuss fiscal year 2021 budget on Tuesday, March 24th, 2020 at 6 p.m. Um, I am moved that we have a study session on Monday, March 24th. According to my calendar, 24th is a Monday. It's, it's March, not February. March, I'm sorry. Strike like that. Tuesday. Oh, it's okay. <clears throat> Start the recall. <laughs> do, do we have a motion? Okay, sure. So moved. Move to approve. Support. Any questions? Um, good evening, Council and Mayor. Just a quick question, actually, a request. In the past, um, when you have your preliminary budget for all of you, the city manager or the finances graciously provided that to the public on our website, I believe. Right? Haven't we in the past done that? I believe so, yeah. Could we do that again? Thank you so much. Through the chair to uh, Ms. Norsini. Uh, I'm sorry. That's okay. I apologize. Um, uh, how soon will we, can we expect a, um, the budget uh, in our hands to be able to review? Oh, oh, that's a good question. So we just, through the chair, ma'am. Yep. Okay, thank you. Uh, we just finished our budget meetings last week, so we're working on finalizing the numbers right now and all the recommendations, so that should be very soon. Thank you. You're welcome. And if I get a, a, an exact date, I'll make sure to email that to council. I appreciate that. No problem. Okay. Any other questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. <clears throat> Item 6C is approval of request from Notre Dame Council 3021 Knights of Columbus to utilize the vacant city owned parcel adjacent to 3144 South Wayne Road for the annual Notre Dame car show on July 11th, 2020. Move to approve. Second, Support. Wagner. Any questions? Since in the property belongs to us, um, is there any guarantee or some type of signature that they have that they will be responsible for any possible lawsuits that we might get for injuries on that property? Yes, they, they get insurance for it. This isn't the first time they've done this. Any other questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item number seven, administration reports. Yes. Okay, through the chair. We have a few this evening. I'm going to have Mike Biden come up. He wants to talk about a project update first. Good evening, Mayor, members of the council. The city had a pre-construction meeting for the John Hicks Bridge Replacement Project this afternoon, and we anticipated that they would um, start around April 15th. That is still their plan for the most part. Um, they do, we do have to be sensitive to the bats in the state of Michigan. There's some tree trimming that needs to be done and that has to take place before the end of March. And so our contractor CA Hall is going to be out in closing that bridge for a couple days in mid to end of March uh, to get that tree trimming done ahead of the the uh, time that's sensitive to the bats. And so um, there'll be a setup of detour for a couple days, then that detour will be taken back down um, until we start the project in April. Just wanted to make sure that everybody understood that there would be that early two day shutdown, approximately two days. Through the chair, I ask, uh, Mr. Byton, uh, who's responsible for this tree trimming? The city or? No, this is part of the project. Okay. This is a plan part of the project. It's not going to be from our workforce. It's going to be from their no, workforce. No, sir. That's correct. correct. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Through the chair. Thanks, Mike. Tina, uh, election update? Just a quick one. I just wanted to talk about how much we've increased um, our permanent absentee voters. Back in August, it was 1,166. And now, with any reason voting, and anyone can be a permanent absentee voter. 
We are now at 1,254. And back in 2016, for this very same election, a presidential primary, the total amount of absentee ballots that were sent out were 684. As of today, I have sent out 898, so that's good. And I just wondered if anyone knew, our population is 17,593, and of those, 13,171 are registered voters. And just a reminder, if you want an absentee ballot, just stop by the clerk's office or call and request that application. You can also request to be put on that permanent absentee voter list, which means you get this application automatically. You still have to sign it and return it to get the ballot. And that's all I got. Thank you. Thanks, Tina. And just so everybody, I, I was going to actually add this again. I should be reminding everyone that city hall hours have changed, changed slightly a few months ago. We're open from 10 to 4.30 on Monday through Thursday and 8.30 to 1 p.m. on Fridays. So, and I think the Fridays has, have been going pretty well, especially for the clerk's office. They have, and indeed, I wanted to add, um, the Saturday before the election, the clerk's office will be open from 8 to 4 to process any absentee ballots. All right. Uh, the Parks and Trails Committee uh, had their first meeting uh, last Tuesday, a week ago. And uh, we did uh, put together a park schedule, which will be available to the public soon. Um, however, the park planned cleanups for this year are as follows. Uh, May 16th, Schaefer Park. June 20th, Civitan Park. July 18th, Mill Trail and Dynamite Park. August 15th, DeMario and Sue Wynn. And the cleanup times will be from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. at the locations uh, of each uh, park or trail system. And we'll make sure to advertise that out. Um, the group has also put out a Parks and Trails amenity, um, amenities uh, document. It's out in the, uh, right across from the clerk's office. So if you want to get a list uh, of park amenities and information, that is out there for the public as well. And then we do have the parks and amenities listed online under recreation as well, under the tab. And then, um, let's see, I want to welcome John Mills um, and, and say that he was came to the first meeting was excellent and he's going to be an awesome addition to the group um, really geared up to start helping out and then of course it was Chief Strong's first uh, Parks and Trails meeting so he got to attend that as well so Chief welcome officially too. Uh, regarding there was a question at the last meeting regarding um, the property assessment notices and Katie did respond to the uh, request or however I did want to make sure to address that question. Uh, Katie stated the property assessment notices are sent out each March the Board of Review meets the third week of March to hear appeals of assessed values. And if there's any questions, please uh, see the assessing department Monday through Wednesday, uh, Monday and Wednesday, I'm sorry, Monday or Wednesday from 1 to 4.30 p.m. Let me repeat that. If you have more specific questions for your property, please come see the assessing department on Monday or Wednesday from 1 to 4.30 p.m. weekly. Um, and that'll conclude the report. Thank you. And Public comments for matters not on the agenda, pursuant to the Michigan Open Meetings Act and the enacted procedures and rules of City Council, now is the time for public comment. Any questions will not be answered this evening. The appropriate person will make their best effort to respond by the next Council meeting or as soon as possible, provided you state or leave your contact information with the City Clerk. Approach the podium and state your name. Please limit your comments to three minutes. Mr. Sanders. Hello, my name is Tony Sanders, and I live on Tangwood Drive. Um, I want to find out, are, are we talking about uh, um, our courthouse, us moving with Inkster? Is that correct? Did I hear something about that? That's not going to happen, or we're that, just going to keep our courthouse and our judge and everything? I mean, she's retiring. but yeah, We're not going to answer questions right now, but you can ask your questions, and we'll answer them. Okay. okay. But that's, that's what I wanted to know. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Good evening, members of the City Council and Mr. Mayor. Good evening, John. Uh, my name is John Van Stiptunk. I live on Rivers Edge Drive in Wayne. I'm the, uh, this year's president of the Wayne Rotary Club. And uh, for your consideration and the audience and our citizens watching at home, you may wonder what our club does with monies that we raise 
during our fundraisers, such as um, concerts in the park, as a, as a good example, and our dueling pianos, and many, many more projects that we do. And the answer is, we raise money so that we can give it away. And one way that we do that is by providing a dictionary to every third grade student in the city of Wayne, whether it's public or private school. And uh, we, we needed you to know that, and that we've been doing that for the last 13 years. So we have children 13 years ago in the third grade who have now passed beyond Wayne Memorial High School. And many families have multiple dictionaries in their home. But the real reason why I'm here is to thank you for one, approving uh, our use of Gaudi Park, because we will again be doing our uh, concerts in the park for the last three Wednesdays in July and all of August. It's a lot of work, so we plan way ahead of time. The real, real reason is to thank personally our chief of police who has been coming to the schools with us and in the classrooms and bringing his very old dusty dictionary with him, <laughs> right chief? and telling the kids why it's important to have a dictionary and how to use it and how he uses it almost on a daily basis. And further, uh, the schools were getting a few phone calls because there was an EMT truck and a fire truck in front of the schools. And it's because we would have four, if not five, of our star members of our firefighting fleet also joining us in the classrooms to uh, pass out and sign dictionaries. That was so successful that um, one child at Schweitzer School thought it would be a cool idea to get a firefighter's autograph. <coughs> well, then it became a whole class. We wasted a whole hour getting autographs from everyone, including the Rotary Club members, into the dictionary. But they felt that that was the right thing to do. It was a cool thing to do. So we visited uh, Roosevelt, Hoover, Taft, Schweitzer, St. Joe's, and St. Michael's. So that's a thank you to the police department, a thank you to the fire department, and a thank you to Jody, our library director, because we temporarily stored boxes and boxes and boxes of dictionaries in the back room until we extracted them and, and brought them to the to the library. Okay, thank you, thank you, John. Thank you. No, I just wanted to know how long the bridge would be out on John Hicks. Do you have any idea? Talk, talk to Mike Biden. He can tell you. Anybody else? Jody. Hello, Jody Wallach from the library. I just wanted to make everyone aware of a couple upcoming events at the library. Tomorrow evening, we're hosting a volunteer from the Detroit Institute of Arts who's going to be giving a talk on um, African-American artists and art. This Saturday, we have a children's program called uh, Journey to the Ballot Box, where we're going to be reading a story and doing some activities about the African-American struggle for the right to vote. And then next Saturday, the 29th, we have a rescheduled book talk. Um, local author Esperanza Cintron will be talking about her book Shades, which is a collection of intertwining love stories set in Detroit. Uh, I also have our newsletters for our spring newsletters for March through May that I will be foisting on people out in the hall after the meeting and leaving a stack uh, for you to pick up at your leisure. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Paul. Paul from Howell. Um, just bringing it to attention, we're uh, having a fundraiser. My family set up a fundraiser with Aubrey's in Westland um, March 5th from 11 a.m. to 10. And uh, the fire, uh, actually, it's the City of Wayne First Responders I set it up for. <clears throat> and they'll get 20% of your bill on that day. Okay. And I got flyers, and I'll put flyers up there. Okay. 
Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Mr. Osborne? Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Council. Had a question on January the 21st meeting, and <clears throat> since those council meetings, there's been three, and I wanted to know the information about the vacation of Hubbard Street. What was the width of it? Uh, how much is it, what was it worth to us as a street, and how you went about it? And you were supposed to, that's two more city council meetings, is uh, if you want me to re respond again, it's like, how wide is it? How long is it? Uh, so your square footage, and how much is that worth in city dollars as a item to sell? So do we understand what I said? Okay. So I'll wait another couple of weeks. Okay, anybody else? Mr. Sanders? Pursuant to the city charter, the city council has two direct reports, the city manager and the city attorney. Last council meeting, a question was asked regarding the court question was asked whether the city had engaged anyone in the city had engaged in any conversations with any other municipality and the answer was starkly no well it's amazing what happens when you go to a neighboring community and you get information that clearly says that's a lie And so it is intriguing to me that one of three things happen. Either a member of council or the mayor himself reached out or had the city attorney reach out or had the city manager direct the city attorney to reach out. In any case, that was a bold-faced lie. With that said, if the city attorney acted alone, that would be a city attorney acting rogue. If the city manager instructed the city attorney to reach out without the expressed intention of, I guess, the, the mayor, because he speaks for the council, that would have been rogue. So we have a concern here. I have a concern that I need to know what the truth is. Because I already know what the truth is. And I think the citizens need to know what the truth is. And I believe that most of the council doesn't know what the truth is. And I think that needs to come clean. Thank you very much. OK. Anybody else? Mr. Blackwell. Good evening, Mayor, Council. I'm glad that the uh, city clerk mentioned about the election. The election is Tuesday, March 10th. Make sure you get out and vote. Every vote counts. We have one ballot proposal for Wayne County, the DIA. And as you know, we have three local proposals. Make sure you get out and vote. Exercise that God-given right to each and every one of us. It's very easy. No reason at absentee voting. The clerk and her hardworking staff will take care of you folks. Get out and vote. Vote your conscience. And most, of all, most importantly, remember your budget, your personal budget when you go to vote. Thank you. Okay, anybody else? Okay, um, Mr. Sanders, could you please give a copy of your, your documents to the city clerk so she can uh, make copies for council? No, because I'm sure you can play it the same way I did. I'm sure your attorney can get it for you because it's his partner. 
Okay. Thank you. You just showed us a, a folder. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead. You are yep. The agenda. Number eight, consent calendar. 8A, Wayne Housing Commission minutes of December 9th. Receive and file. Motion to approve. Support. Support. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Comments from members of City Council? Uh, Councilman Miller. Thank you, Mayor Racing. Uh, just a few things here. Uh, as um, the president of the Rotary Club mentioned, uh, and this is a very fun event, it is a dual pi uh, piano party that does happen on March 14th. Um, and as he indicated earlier, uh, the, the funds that are raised at this event go for the Wayne Memorial High School Rotary College Scholarships. So I ask you to come out and help support uh, our students at Wayne Memorial. You can also get these uh, the tickets for this event at uh, some of our local uh, uh, businesses here in Wayne, Kurtz Caps, Henry Service, and the Hype uh, Center as well great musical event. Also, I have, as indicated earlier, a uh, voter reminder, uh, March 10th uh, will be our, one of our first uh, voting exercises in exercising our right to vote. Um, so I ask that you please, uh, please make an effort to uh, participate. Uh, as well, I also want to remind everybody that uh, coming up here in March 2020, um, you're going to be receiving some information from the census. And I know we've all had to file our taxes. We all come to realize how much we pay our federal government. And the only way we're going to see that money come back to our state, more importantly to our community, is to make sure that we're counted. So I ask you to participate in the census. You will be receiving some information regarding uh, how to, uh, to participate. There's three options, by mail, by phone, or by online. And lastly, I want to call out the Knights of Columbus. Um, they have been uh, relentless in finding ways in being able to give back to this community. And I just saw something just recently, and I want to uh, point it out, is on uh, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, anytime after 6 o'clock, they're asking for any donations of toys, um, clothes, uh, toiletries for children between the ages of 1 and 18. And this will go be contribute to uh, residents in the Norway um, uh, area. So I would ask uh, if you would stop by here. They got a lot of great uh, events going on there. If not a dollar taco evening or the um, <coughs> coyote, coyote, if I'm not pronouncing it correctly, uh, on Friday nights. So uh, once again, Knights of Columbus, thank you for what you're doing, and I ask everyone to support them. Thank you. Councilman Dowd. Well, thank you, thank you, Mayor. Um, first, I want to thank our volunteers, uh, Mr. Mills on his appointment, uh, Mr. Bunnick on his reappointment, and Mr. Morrow for his uh, uh, time on the DDA board. Um, also, just wanted to briefly uh, highlight, I uh, had the pleasure to go to the Champions of Wayne uh, award banquet what a what a spectacular event and i got really lucky i got to sit at the founding founding father's table mr gray and uh his wife come to find out he was one of my elementary teachers so uh, he remembered me said that i was a little thinner back then and i agreed so, uh, it was great to see the kids uh, uh the enthusiasm the families and the volunteers, I'm just overwhelmed with the volunteers we have in this city. I think it's something that we've got to uh, celebrate this year. I think there's actually a national volunteer day that we should look into uh, creating something long term. I think it's in the third or fourth quarter of the year uh, because we do, we are very fortunate to have a lot of volunteers and we should personally 
show some appreciation and shine a light on that this year. With that, I'll pass. Thank you, Councilman Wagner. Thank you. Um, as Kevin already said, the uh, Champions Wayne event was a wonderful event. Uh, a lot of just amazing stories. It's it's kind of amazing the uh, the things these kids have to go through and how such an organization can give them the uh, inspiration to excel academically is is just wonderful. Um, two weeks ago, John and I had a good meeting with our state rep, Kevin Coleman, up in Lansing. I learned some great things about how the state government works and met some great people up there as well. While I was there, I presented him with our resolution regarding the exploration of court consolidation. Although, oh no, I just lost my place. Although these, uh, these next couple meetings were not expected, we also got in to see our Senator Daly, Dana Polhanke and uh, someone from the governor's office as well. Uh, we told them about Wayne's financial struggles and how court consolidation could be one way to save a lot of money. I did want to clear up some misunderstandings about this resolution. If everybody remembers, this is a resolution to explore court consolidation. That's all it is. Exploration, which means we will explore whether any of our neighboring communities want to consolidate a court with ours. They may or they may not. It means we will explore whether any consolidation would make financial sense. It means we explore the possibility, the feasibility, and the practicality of a court consolidation. No negotiations have started about actually consolidating our court with anybody else's. It is possible that in the exploration phase, it will become evident that it does not make financial sense to consolidate the court. If this is the case, then we will not pursue court consolidation. However, there's a very good chance that court consolidation could save the city a lot of money, therefore we are exploring it. As most people know, this city is still in dire financial straits and we have to consider any and all possible sa ways of saving money. Next. The upcoming ballot resolutions. Uh, normally I don't address this, but I'm going to now because I think it's needed. I have seen a lot of misinformation on social media. Therefore, I'm going to ask everybody, please read the proposals for yourself. I believe they're on the city's website. You can also come down here to City Hall and read them. I saw a post uh, stating that the resolution to change the mayor's term from two years to four years would be an extension of the current mayor's term. This is false. You will vote for a mayor in November, whether this resolution passes or not. I could go on about more misinformation on social media, but I don't need to. Just please read the proposals for yourself. Uh, I am available to answer questions. My email is available on the city website. I'm also here after meetings usually. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Wagner. I'm sorry, Councilor Webster. Oh, I didn't know there was another <laughs> Wagner. Um, I just have one thing tonight, and uh, I want to talk about the uh, Commission on Aging. We, we met for the first time uh, this past week. I want to thank Tina for running the meeting. Um, I think we, had a, we shared a lot of great ideas, um, but we still do need people to, to join the commission. We don't quite have a full group as of yet, so we have one open position, possibly another, depending on the health of one of our members. So. I would like uh, the members of the city to consider joining this commission because we do need uh, some some people that would like to share and uh, give some good ideas for the seniors of our community. And with that, I'll pass. Councilman Skiff. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to let everybody know about um, a coffee hour that Councilman Wagner and I will be having in March. Um, there was a comment made at last meeting that um, just a comment that uh, I had not possibly availed myself to the public amount um, enough about upcoming issues. So um, after the meeting, um, Councilman Wagner and I spoke and we decided that we wanted to do a coffee hour um, and have people come out and talk about um, just issues that, you know, that are that are coming up and things like that if you have any questions. Um, really kind of informal. So I believe we set that for March 26th, correct, Phil? 
<laughs> it's going to be at the library, <laughs> March 26th. Yes, so March 26th at uh, 6 6.30. 30. Yeah, 6.30 yeah, to 7.30. 30. Yes. So I hope that everyone can come out, and um, especially if you have any questions for us, but also anytime you'd like to contact us and you're unable to um, make the coffee hour, we um, have our emails, our city emails. Mine is kskiff at cityofwayne.com, and Phil's is pwagner at cityofwayne.com. Wing.com. So thank you. That's it. Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I'm going to touch lightly on uh, what Councilman Wagner mentioned about mistruths and such on social media. Uh, first, I'd like to use a quote from Mr. Matt Morrow's resignation letter. It is no secret that there are sections within our city that seek division. While thinking of this quote and attempting to type an answer to some extremely negative posts on social media the last several weeks, I happened to see that my niece Kelly Martin posted this saying, the less you respond to negative people, the more peaceful your life will become. I absolutely have to thank her for this timely reminder of this bit of wisdom. I took my old one and threw it away. My original post was a reply to the negative peace people on social media that had regurgitated the investigative report once again and then added their own flair to it. Look, I totally respect everyone's freedom of speech. Unfortunately, in some cases, if you interpret freedom of speech as the freedom to embellish or outright lie, to make this a positive comment instead of replying to the negative, I ask you to think about this. Since October of 2018, there has been absolutely no grievances filed by our labor unions of our city and no complaints by our non-union staff. None. Absolutely none. But instead, what we have is an atmosphere of teamwork in the city. I attend meetings quite often at City Hall and go and and what I observe are people working together to, ta to accomplish their objectives and goals. The negative people don't want you to hear this, I assure you. But here is my challenge. City Council is elected by the residents of our city. If you feel that your city needs change and your council is not doing business correctly to get it done, then please run for council. If you wish to make excuses why you can't run, that's fine. But it is your duty to let us know respectfully, respectfully, when you see a different way to accomplish a goal. That, my friends, is how you make change. Not by complaining, accusing, and pointing fingers. Just approach us. Everyone sitting on this council is attempting to do his or her very best for our city. We may have differing opinions here and between you and us. However, we still are attempting to do the same thing. We are trying to make this city better. I want you to know that I have absolute, total confidence in our administration, department heads, and staff. They have been accommodating, open, extremely helpful to me as a city councilman. As examples, I often send questions to get answers and get answers on agenda items on a Saturday or a Sunday. I have yet to go to City Hall to be met with anything but a smiling face and courtesy. Many of our staff volunteer with cleanups and other things that make our city a better place to live. That, my friends, is above and beyond the job they were hired to do, and I applaud them for that. I wish to say to each and every person working at the City of Wayne, thank you, and know that you have my family's full support. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, um, I got a few things tonight. I just got a uh, word from the uh, American Cancer Society that they're going to be doing a Relay for Life of uh, Wayne Wesleyan kickoff uh, on Thursday, February 27th at 6.30 to 8 o'clock. 
at the Westland City Hall. Um, this is a great event they do every year and uh, really making a difference in both of our communities to, uh, to help people uh, that have cancer and, and people that have lost loved ones to cancer. And yeah, if you could put that on social media and also post it on the uh, bulletin board, would be great. I also want to congratulate uh, a couple of uh, alumni from Wayne Memorial that uh, have been in the news in the last week uh, or so. Um, we had uh, Wayne Memorial graduate uh, Anavia Battle, which I've talked about her before. Uh, even though she goes to Ohio State, I think it's a great thing that she, what's going on. Um, she is the fastest woman in the world right now in the 200 meter dash. So, uh, and with the Olympics coming up, that could be very, very uh, interesting that we could have somebody that graduated from Wayne Memorial uh, in the Olympics. Um, also, uh, there's a guy named uh, Rashad Williams that's going to uh, Oakland University. And uh, he, uh, if you uh, Google his name, I would imagine you could find it. Uh, this last few days ago, uh, he was on ESPN's Sports Center for top 10, 10 plays in the country. So it's pretty pretty neat that we have some Wayne graduates that are, are, are making some uh, news in the world right now. Um, I also got a chance to uh, go to the Champions Dinner and uh, it's always a great a great event. Uh, uh, Richard Helpy and uh, Mr. Steyers have done uh, a great thing with uh, giving back to the community and making that happen. Uh, I think there was a hundred, was it 170, 180, 180 kids this time, which is one of the largest uh, groups of kids that have received checks. So each one of those kids received $200 check. So th think about that, 180 times 200, and plus they they get a banquet and all the mentoring and what's going on with that. Um, very very cool uh, what they're doing, and it's and it's making a difference. And they're seeing Wayne High gradually um, rise in. in uh, the rankings of, of the high school is coming back uh, slowly, but uh, it's definitely made a, made a difference from where they first began. And then I'm gonna close with a, a few comments about uh, some of the stuff that's been going on in the last uh, couple weeks. Um, let's see. First, I'll address uh, the, uh, the, the comment that was made about a FOIA. Uh, I would like the city to please FOIA the the, uh, the, the documents, um, he, the, the uh, Mr. Sanders never said what city he received those from. He waved waved that uh, to that. I did have a a, a meeting with uh, the Romulus mayor. I know that they received a FOIA, and I don't believe, and I know that there's no documents that should be there. So I am very confident that there's not going to be documents found. I would I would bet that 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 folder had nothing in it other than documents that. That he didn't want to show us, and uh, I think that that's uh, really sad to come up here and not show us. Uh, if you say you have something, produce what you have. If you're coming to tell, come to come to council, produce what you're saying, and and let us be able to investigate something. If not, you know, shouldn't even come up here. Um, then on the on the uh, as an update to the court consolidation exploration, other local communities. Uh, are, are willing to move forward in looking at exploration at this time. Um, none of these meetings have happened till after the exploration was passed. I still stand by what I said at the last meeting. Um, I've we've spoke with uh, with the team. We've spoke with the Michigan Department of Treasury, and they're requesting uh, we're, we're requesting their assistance to find funding options for this. Um, we have not done any exploration at this point other than trying to find now find partners to try to do a study um, trying to figure out what we can do to get this to move this has been a, a long time that we haven't done anything with this um, and then I'll address at the last council meeting at the last meeting council Mil councilman Miller asked about a previous convers conversations within specific time frame at the time of the meeting, I was not aware of any uh, conversations um, about, about this subject. The following week, when I, I found out that the Romulus mayor and the Romulus city attorney had brought the subject up 
with the Romulus chief judge. There were no discussions or negotiations on behalf of the city of Wayne. I spoke to the Romulus mayor about this in a meeting I said last, last Wednesday. Um, and uh, I've been very po it's been very positive as I've talked to the other communities, the people willing to work with our community and try to figure out, help us work through this process and, and, and learn uh, what, what's going on. And I just want people to remember, this is an exploration. What you're reading on Facebook, there's a lot of mistruths out there. I've read a lot of mistruths, the stuff with Inkster. No, no, there's no deal, nothing's gonna be done. I read that this was happening tonight. As you can see, it's not on the agenda. There was nothing here to talk about tonight because people are making stuff up, and that's sad. We really need to look at what's going on and try to help our council do the right thing. We need to figure out how we can save money and try to figure out what's the best thing for our community. And if we can figure out if there's a way to save, if there's a savings, then the council may do this. If they don't, we don't do it. But give the council the ability to do their jobs. People should not be getting in the way of the council trying to do their duty that they have sworn an oath to this community to do the best for our community. Uh, so with that, um, can I get a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Support. Support. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries.